Well, good morning. Welcome to this meeting. Uh, in our quest to... I put my copies. I saw that. Thank you. Uh, in our quest to keep things to an hour and a half, I'd like to get started. And uh, first is the minutes from the previous meetings that we have not yet approved. Does everybody have a copy of those minutes? Yes, and I actually got here earlier to read them. So I approve, I move that we approve the Thursday, September 26th minutes. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any corrections, additions, concerns about the 26th? Hearing none, I accept a motion to approve. I mean, um, got the motion. all those in favor, please. Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. And I now move the uh, minutes of Thursday, October 10. Is there a second? Second. Any corrections, additions, or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, thank you. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not contagious, it's just allergies. All right, um, what's, I don't have my agenda in front of me. It's, it's more of the same as what she said. Discussion of place types. Okay, place type discussion. When I went to work on my transportation section, which is not a place type, um, I decided to go back to the document that Martha Hevener supplied us with in the beginning, which gives us an outline of what we're supposed to be achieving and um, a timeline and a process for getting approved, plan approved. Um, the only, and I wanted to thank um, Elaine for sending us the housing plan because one of the three mandatory components in the LCP is a plan to provide for the development of fair, low, and moderate income housing consistent with local needs. So I think it's gone a long way towards starting that process. Well, we actually have our the plan that we did in 2017, which I think is totally that relevant, that was approved right. by the planning board, select board, and the state. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that has like a 12-page executive executive summary and then a hundred and some pages full report. Right. right. So I think that we are. Um, I was happy to feel realize that we were covered mm -hmm. with that. We've done our public outreach. So because place types are. Um, Specific to this plan, we have one of our goals is to make the local comprehensive plans consistent with the regional policy plan. So place types are the new, um, as we have discussed, imperative here. And since Jan turned hers in first, I think we'll start with Jan's. Terribly sketchy, and I ran out of gas, but it's, <laughs> it's a start. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Does everybody have Jan's? No, I'm the only one that has the pile, right? Yeah. I gave it to you. All right, so let's see. I don't think there's enough. Two, I have my own. Three, four. You have seven. Six, seven. Uh, one, well, let's just do this. I'm going to go make a few more. Take one and pass it around. And then we'll make a pile for um, Mike Travato, who couldn't be here today. And I emailed mine to you, but it's not. Well, that was this morning, and I haven't checked it yet. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a printer at home. They're working the library. Suzanne said something about two pages, but I... <laughs> ran out of gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I made like, these bullets for my page, so... Yeah. Uh, okay. So who... Um, anyway. Yeah, when okay. I did, when I, I did, you know, I, I can honor by small, and I just did one. Did you? Oh, thank you. That's a All right, Jan, you want to uh, 
Run us through know, what you again, have. I should have put rough draft by draft because um, other than the vision, which is much of what Jay said with my um, additions to it, um, I, I didn't have a great deal of confidence about um, the narrative. I think the goals are pretty standard and obvious and just the beginning. Um, we could certainly add to that, but if you would just read it, you, you know, then you can tell me if I'm on the right or wrong track. I don't know, this, it reads a little bit too, too much like an advertisement to me. Uh-huh. You know, like, I, yeah, we're trying to, it's almost like you're trying to sell... Well, I think it's good to have a positive slant, but I think we have to acknowledge our needs as well yeah. as our assets mm -hmm. in each section. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we did when we did the flip chart exercise was um, list, um, like define places that can be considered natural areas. Mm -hmm. And I think I, would you think that was reasonable to add our well, flip I chart information? Well, I thought I had put them, but, but not so obviously. In other words, I put ocean, bay beaches, harbor, ponds, wetlands, wildlife, um, national seashore, mm -hmm. Audubon. It's all in the language, but maybe too succinctly. It is a suggestion. Yes. I actually, in mine, did this, because I feel like people read bullets, and they actually, so I actually put this stuff listed, because I think people actually engage with bulleted points. Right, I thought we needed a narrative. We, we do need a narrative. I did put a narrative yeah. also. But I think I, I think we can have both. And I think if the if people's attention is captured by a list of bullets bulleted topics, they will then read the narrative to flesh out what's in the narrative. Um, Suzanne? Yes, I, I, mean, um, I think maybe I mean? because I missed the um, presentation mm -hmm. with Martha, I feel a little, um, I mean, I tried something. Yeah. I'll share it if you want to, but um, I wonder if there's a template we could all be using or if we're totally, I mean, I, I sort of wrote mine based on, you know, this list right. that we talked about, but I don't know if that's set in stone or they're just ideas and what we want the whole form to look like at the end. Um, I mean, I've, That's kind of the hard part. Yeah. The template is. Yeah. I don't think there's a template because the commission just turned everything on its head by restructuring mm -hmm. their po regional policy plan. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking one topic and trying to squeeze it into one area, now they've created the areas and everything that fits under any area mm -hmm. is their way of framing it. So. Okay. Having said that, Jan had a, Jan was saying that I mean what I understood you to say was that you sort of fizzled out or petered out, didn't make a long Well I, I didn't make a long story of it. Right. I mean as concise as possible. Because that's probably the wrong thing to do. Well, I don't know if it's wrong, but I think it's it's a, well, it's mean, it's how we begin. And I think if we go from person to person and see how each person reacted to their section and then we'll get a better idea of okay. where we're going. I don't think we should stop and dissect each individual one, just kind of go over it and then... Um... In, in terms of like the template, mm -hmm. I'm just going by really like the place types as my mm -hmm. template going mm -hmm. through like the one for natural areas, like yeah. going through all this and trying to use that as a, as a baseline mm -hmm. on determining Okay. You know where to go from there. Okay, I don't so know if you use moved this. that up yeah. from um, that book? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So there's and one yeah. for each one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, yeah. So I, I just it's use small. that as a start to, right. so mm -hmm. somewhat of a template. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they do, in reading through it, they do want ours to jive with yeah, theirs. Yes. To a greater degree so, than not. Right. Yeah. There's room to personalize it. Right. But right. At least right. It's a start. But to kind right. Of, and yeah. I, I think that. 
from the commission's point of view, and I'm reading into this because no one has told me this, I'm imagining they would want each town's local comprehensive plan to be able to be compared to another town's local comprehensive plan. It should be, you should be able to read two or three and, and be able to compare across the board. Well, right. as far as the commission's concerned. As far as the commission's concerned, right. not us. I'm just saying as far as the commission's concerned. Yeah. I think that might be their goal. But that's not necessarily what we need to do. No, no, no. no. But we need to do enough to get it uh, approved so far, yeah. by the commission and by town meeting and also have some meat in it because ultimately um, each section will need to go to the pass through the, the, the measure of what zoning regulations would have to be put into place or amended to allow these goals to go forward. I mean, that's a mere, that's a screen we have to go through. And there are also language in here, which I had forgotten until I reviewed it this week, um, about infrastructure goals, a five-year plan for infrastructure. Well, in our case, Wellfleet's case is probably housing. Housing, housing, and then some more housing. But we need infrastructure for more housing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah, the infrastructure right. we need. Uh, not, the infrastructure for not housing. Not building and th stuff like that. Right. I mean, business. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that infrastructure also includes condition of roads and sidewalks for, mm -hmm. don't you mm -hmm. think? It's in the capital facilities plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, so, so that's so different from the infrastructure. In the regulations plan. for the LCP from the commission, it says local comprehensive plan content Number four, capital facilities plan. Identification of capital facilities and infrastructure projects needed to support growth or redevelopment in areas identified by the community through the LCP process as appropriate and desirable for such purposes. So that's one of their, their defined sections. Yeah. So it's not like so you're a infrastructure right. plan. It's all within the capital facilities plan. And the housing plan follows that. Do we have a capital facilities plan? Um, I don't believe so. Well, I mean, we have it for budgetary yeah. reasons. We yeah. have capital facilities. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, the ten. We have the. Uh, is it still ten year plan that we're being asked yeah. to do? I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is. I have trouble doing next year's capital right. requests. Mm -hmm. Effectively, effectively. Um, I mean, I, I know what I want, but I can't necessarily assign an accurate dollar figure to them in the plan. Mm -hmm. That's my challenge. Um, but that's not today's discussion. Mm -hmm. All right, so natural areas. Jay, you want to take yours? Do you, did you bring copies or shall I make them? Of what? Uh, of your section. I, I didn't get to it. All right. Jennifer? I emailed it to you because um, I... Do you have one I, copy? Because I don't have a printer at home and I'm on vacation this week. Okay. Um, so let's I, see. Uh, Jay, did you get to do your section on light industrial areas? Did you I, that was I your... made notes okay. on my page. Uh, All right. I if you'll excuse me, over. talk about that, and I'll go print out Jennifer's. This, and I'll I'm like, really this sorry. Is my, okay. double sided. Okay. This is yeah. terrible. It's a start. <laughs> yeah, mine too. I'm just brainstorming. And I talk about social infrastructure because my stupid book review for. Provincetown Independent did that oh. book. And so <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about your comment, um, Mac, with the, and I realized that I was very much swayed by the Brewster book. Do you remember the, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the vision statement? Well, yeah, the vision statement. The vision, but the thing that it doesn't meet, I don't think it fully meets and was approved by oh, the commission, so no. they're not going to get any sort of like right. special funding or services from it. So. Right, I understand that, but the, the attitude of it, the yeah. positive, yeah. Right. And I, yeah. you know, that's, I think, yeah. what influenced me. And of course, the other thing is, I think we're wonderful, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think what's hard about all of this is keeping it in the context of the goal, you know, and the goal is to create a guiding document for the town for the next yeah. 10 years. And, um, for how many years? For at least the next 10. Oh, I thought it was fine. Well, in reality, yeah. it's... <laughs> oh, well, that's, so that's, so for instance, if we're talking about infrastructure, we need right. to really think about so, yeah. where and we want to 
going to be 10 years from now with infrastructure. And I think that that point, that the reason they require that section is that infrastructure is one of the largest drivers of, of real change. Yeah. If you have a sewer system, for instance, you know, it, it opens opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that, and that's a huge infrastructure that, that a lot of towns in the Cape don't have. Water systems, you know, I mean, yeah. Bicycle, the water system. Bicycle, bicycle trails. Bicycle trails. You know, when I yeah. mine is like we have this seasonal economy, which is you know, because I'm in the community activity center, which is like here, but then you have nothing, and that's sort of a dismal, mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't bring people here. It doesn't bring the same tourism right. dollars. It doesn't, and it's a dismal way, an isolated way for people to live here without even a coffee shop. I mean, yeah. Without a, you know, at the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Us. Should have kept that deli up there in that building when we built the library. The deli and library? <laughs> Everybody wants a coffee shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But those things take considerable infrastructure. They do take considerable infrastructure. You know, and... Well, those are, and I think that's kind of the stuff that's really important that people do say that and, you know, how to, how to create enough economy around that in the off season, for instance, infrastructure could be, um, you know, more access to high speed internet. Right. Right. And then, yeah, I sort of touch on that. I called it like community infrastructure or mm -hmm. whatever, but, um, well, you'll see, but... Social infrastructure? Well, <laughs> no, I just read a book on social yeah. infrastructure, so I call it that. But, um, but um, it's called palaces of the people. It's like where the people meet and gather, how it's like the actual places are... Um, important. Important, yeah. right next... You know, it's like, those buildings are just important as like the buildings we build for capital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, because they create a place where people can meet and break various divides, um, you know, in our world. And, and I think that's profoundly important, actually. Um, you know, community gathering spaces. I don't even know if we have a. You know, do we? Did we kind of the list? Of shared space is on community activity centers. Right. Community activity centers. So which which one do you do? Which place Community action. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a lot of that infrastructure that you were talking about, Mac, in, in mind with the light industrial activity areas. Mm -hmm. We're trying to implement all the, you know, the utilities, water, well, sewer, right. gas, electricity, you know, you name it. And the fact that we have like Outer Cape mm -hmm. Health as a community activity center is kind of. Sad. <laughs> Well, it's great that we have it, though. It's right. an asset. It's right. a, yeah. an yeah. asset, but it's yeah. not... Uh, we're using it to fill up some void. Exactly, we're yeah. using it to fill up void. Mm -hmm. You know, in um, a bigger town that wouldn't be used as a community activity center. Mm -hmm. So, You're talking about more like the community center, not like I mean, Press Hall, I consider. Oh, yeah, the community yeah. Center, the libraries. Do. This is a community yes, center. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. Actually, one of those things that we did, one of the large meetings that we did a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, in one of the groups that I was sitting mm -hmm. with, this woman said that she felt that we should have a, a, a genuine community center yeah. in town. Like with a, a swimming pool, a public swimming pool, maybe. Yeah, yeah with yeah. activities, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talked about that yesterday in the um, CPC meeting. That, uh, um, there's probably some interest in developing the land here Thank you. as a community center pool. Well, and um, the problem is CPC money probably can't. Oh, it's an expensive that. proposition. Not, not, well, not according to Suzanne. Well, the construction is not that bad. The operation and maintenance yeah. is no, just just the trick. Yeah, ask um, <laughs> See the example of Willie's. Yeah. Oh no, I don't use that as an example. I mean, the pool is now a good thing. I don't know. Wait and see. I don't know what's going on. Does everybody have Jennifer's? No, no, that pool is actually very nice. All right. All right, well.
I did have a meeting yesterday with Jerry Sorkin and Rhonda Fowler. Oh, yeah. Um, Rhonda is. And I told them great. both that any discussion of a pool needed a lot more community input before we went forward with any kind of funding. So it'll be, a, the minimum would be a year from now. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. Thank yes. you. You're quite welcome, Jan, as a sidebar to a different committee. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Jennifer. Yes. Okay, so I had community activity centers as mine, and I had a mission-ish statement at the top to support, recognize, and build upon community assets of wealth that bring a wide variety of cultural resources to the town, and uh, it's kind of awkwardly, but, and it must provoke, promote diverse recreational economic development opportunities for both the year-round population and visiting populations. Um, and then I wrote about how our year-round population has approximately 3,000 people. So we, not and we have a surprisingly large number of community activity centers. And, and these were essentially the ones that were identified um, at our last meeting. I might have added a couple. Um, and then I talk about why they're great. And I talk about how we have a cultural council and we've created a cultural district that can support those to some extent. But then I talk about what we don't have. Um, and uh, we don't have um, sustaining um, uh, community activity centers. We have some. We have the COA, we have the library, we have Preservation Hall, but we don't have... Um, shared spaces. We don't have coffee shops and restaurants that are open all year round. We don't have, um, uh, uh, it, it's very isolating. Um, and um, there aren't places for people to gather in the winter. Um, I talk about a, 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 a void in cultural and social infrastructure. And we need to invest more of this in the winter months because that is crucial in the vitality of this town. It's not just about like buildings and um, sewers and, and all of that. And, and you know, it's about um, people being able to come together. It's about broadband. It's about um, inviting people out of their houses and into spaces. Um, the darkness is is you know forces people just to. Hibernate, and and we see this. Those of us that work in the library, I'm sure you see this because you're in public service as well. Um, Especially the darkness. Yeah, seniors are terribly impacted by how early it gets dark. Yes, yes. Yeah. And um, so, promoting arts and community activities during the winter is investing in Wellfleet has the potential to bring tourism even in the off season, as the entire town will not be closed. It stimulates the economy. It shines a positive light on a community that only seems to be inviting during a short window of the year. So that's basically my first draft, first first draft. Okay, um, thank you. I think it's Thomas? interesting. Sorry. I, I, Go ahead. It's just interesting to, to note that you went from community activity centers into... Uh, what we do in the yeah, in, in, in the off-season, or the seasonality of this town and how that plays such a big factor. Mm -hmm. Well, I looked at these community activity centers and I realized how few of them, or how so many of the big ones, um, play into the seasonality of the town. Even our art galleries, we call this yeah. the art gallery town, mm -hmm. that shuts down during the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are by appointment only, but we have, like, at the COA and at the library, uh, that's it in terms of our art galleries. I think Pres Hall might have some um, exhibits as well. But our traditional art galleries, you know, when I was doing the uh, original grant for the um, cultural district, um, and I had to find out the hours of all the art galleries in the winter. It was either closed or just by appointment, mm -hmm. which meant closed. Mm -hmm. And um, so what is that saying about an art gallery town? It's saying it's only an art gallery town during part of the year. Um, so it kind of went down this, this 
this uh, sad rabbit hole. <laughs> so I know it needs to be fleshed out. I need to something more positive about it um, because it is exciting. You know, and I do put in here that people are excited about it, and we all see it as. I mean, it can be extremely frustrating and. Um, uh, you know, hard to navigate driving and um, there's a lot of people around or whatever, but it's really exciting to see people loving this town when it's open. Bonnie, you're next. Yeah, I, I thought that, um, you know, just looking at kind of doing a little ticket of what's closed, what's open on this list, I think what's actually missing from this list is kind of the restaurants and bars which are activity. Yeah, I'm sure where are they? Anyway, yeah. but I, you know, no, in the bulletin we list, have, she's we have a problem with having somewhere to go. And well, that's right. Like, it says coffee oh, shops in the back. It's on the back in terms of what we need. Oh, the needs. Yeah, I mean, we do have those during the... But what I, what I was thinking was that a lot of things on this list are, it's not like we need new infrastructure. We need to... I call it social infrastructure. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like more utilizing the churches could be more utilized as community centers. Mm -hmm. Even even Pres Hall could be. You know, there could be more going on. Well, yeah. I, I, I agree that um, there's to utilize existing buildings for new activities. But the churches do have activities. They have, I know the 246 Kitchen at the Methodist Church is a huge wintertime activity that reduces isolation. And it's not about the food as much as it is about having dinner with people once a week. And the Mustard Seed Kitchen comes out of the Congregational Church. Congregational Church houses AA. They house the no. substance... Catholic Church now. Does. Oh, sorry, Catholic Church. Yeah. No, we still have one meeting Saturday nights at the, con oh, at Saturday, the Congregational yeah. Church. Yeah. And the rest are at the Catholic yeah. Church. Yeah, um, they have the 349 the recovery group meets there two nights a week. So these are not like hoo-hoo activities that people um, see as a reason to come to Wealthy, but the churches are providing space for that kind of social interaction. But like, what about just hanging out? Um, they know. did that with the kids for a while at the congregation. And the kids stopped coming. They put in a ping pong table yeah. right Except in the mountain. I know. You know, but that didn't last. No, the kids stopped coming. That's why it turned into the mustard seed kitchen only. Right. Because the original vision was an after-school hangout place plus snacks, and then it became meals. And But I think that one of the... Um, this is a plan. This is not an analysis of what we have so much as what we'd like mm -hmm. to see. And I don't think saying that something is lacking is necessarily a criticism, it's just a, a goal. I, and I, I don't want it to be seen as negative. Um, All right. So I like your goals. I like the fact that the socialization piece is one of the things I, did you talk about or refer to, I think I saw it, um, shared working spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is definitely something that, there's so many individual people are working from home in isolation here uh, that they could get together in a, sh in a shared working space that creates socialization mm -hmm. so that's something that mean, like. anything a coffee shop yeah people want a coffee oh, shop okay. why well, you put a coffee shop <laughs> in the shared a working coffee space shop that's pop, you know able to make a profit can't tell you how many times that is. I always said I would go twice a day every day if that would help it. But um, it's to get people to sit in a place together in the winter. You can't sit yeah. outside in the winter and talk. I agree, and I, I know that for many years the for, uh, the only restaurant that was open year round was the lighthouse, mm -hmm. and people said, "Oh, we have to have a restaurant," but nobody went to it. Right. Not nobody. Not right. enough people went it. out in the dark to have dinner out right. to support that restaurant, so it could stay open. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the challenge. The chicken and the egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. I, when I get home at five o'clock and you it's pitch black. I don't, I'm not thinking I want to turn around and go out and have dinner. Yeah. I'm, you know, there, there, there is a place for it. Like my first year here, they, they I, got, I got a call from uh, Brenda Withers from Harbor Stage, and she um, said she had gotten a cultural council grant for a staged reading. 
And could she rent the room? I'm like, no, but I'll co-sponsor it. Right, right. So it was at 7.30 at night on a Friday in December. Mm -hmm. People came dressed up. They came, like, like, it was standing room only, and they'd all gone out to dinner somewhere. And so then I put in our strategic plan that I wanted more off-season evening events. And we've been doing it, mm -hmm. and people are coming. Mm -hmm. of all kinds, from mm -hmm. popular music to classical music to, you know, mm -hmm. to plays, to play readings, yeah. whatever. And so there is a, there is a void that's, that we're filling, but, and people are coming to work in the library, but I would love for it to be elsewhere. I'd love for broadband to be elsewhere. We're the only place that, you know, um, people can come to do that. And, um... I just, but I, you know, I love a place for young people, younger mm. people to go. Mm. You know, to kind of take a step back from the, it, in order to have more people go out to restaurants or a restaurant to be open in the winter, we need more people in town mm -hmm. year round. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's. It's one thing to say, yeah, we need a coffee shop, but the bigger issue, and this is really, I think, more to the point of this planning, is where do we want this town to be in five years if we don't even have 3,000 people year-round? You yeah. put that number in there, it, I'd really like to know the year-round population is less, and then the wintertime population yeah. is even lower. My, um, my census, like every year I have to do library statistics and they put the annual census in a bar that I can't write in. You know what I mean? It's so it's actually it says twenty seven fifty or something like that. Right. So, so then, I it's gonna change this year, but um, it's gonna change this year because everybody wants to vote in the presidential election next year. So our statistics are gonna boom as they did in two thousand eight. And 2012 mm -hmm. and 2016. Mm -hmm. Well, this is last 10, this is 10 years right. ago. Mm -hmm. Right. But so you're talking about the 2010 census, census. federal census, mm -hmm. whatever, required door to door census. Yeah, which is no more. We are, I went to a census meeting two days ago, mm -hmm. and East End, Wolfley, Truro, and Provincetown had such a poor return rate for pay, mailed in census returns and a poor response to door to door. They're only going to do it online now right, for those really, four towns. It's going to really affect libraries. Or by phone, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really going to affect libraries, so we're all being like, trained. And Are you being sworn in? Well, Because you're not allowed to help anybody on the computer unless you've sworn the census oath. Well, we're... <laughs> That's what I was told. I said, fine, swear me in. I, I'll help. I mean, come over here. We'll make an appointment and we'll help people do their census returns. Yeah, we're having a... You know, the ALA is sending us information on how to... Well, let me know, because okay. we'd be glad to do it over here, too. Anyway, that's a sidebar. Yeah. Uh, but I think that either... Where do we want to be in five years? Where were we five years ago for, for uh, population and then ten years ago? I think we're pretty stable in our yeah. year-round population, mm -hmm. and anticipating that it's going to grow is unrealistic at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really do. So we can... Um, I would like to see the goals in this plan be realistic. I mean, I can come up with a bunch of goals that are totally unreachable, mm -hmm. but I'd like to have achievable yeah. goals. Yeah. I have a question about that, too. So when we actually, when we come to the point where we're, you know, we're making a plan about goals and mm -hmm. that, that hopefully will be implemented. Right. I mean, for a coffee shop, for instance, I mean, it's not like the town's going to be implementing that business or the purchase of that business and, and all that. So how do you how do you make a realistic goal? I, I mean, I can tell you that you know what I'm saying? from a business perspective, yeah, please. Yeah. you need to create an environment that welcomes businesses. Right. And, right. you know, a lot of that is um, economically driven or and or mm. infrastructurally driven. Like I said, right now we don't have a sewer system yeah, in downtown Wealthy. Yep. So you have a situation in you know, in wealthy, where you have to put your own septic system in the ground. And right. For a commercial septic system, it's incredibly expensive. Oh, yeah. And, and the minimum amount of land that's required to do that is um, the center of town is already built out. Oh, yeah. So, for instance, in Provincetown, they have a, um, a sewer system town-wide. And what Provincetown has done is 
worked with businesses to either increase their capacity if it was limited mm -hmm. or help them with the way that, that, that they have to pay for that access to the sewer through a, you know, a betterment, betterment fund. Thing. Right, so the betterment can be financed in different ways. Mm -hmm. So this is, that's just an example of how a government can create yeah. an environment to awesome. encourage business. Yeah, but you have to be. So that's an implementation measure there that will help promote one of the things that development. I've seen in the yeah. last five years is people young, particularly young people, come into town. They want to start a business. They have a great idea, and there's no process for them to go through, and there's little support for it. Well, I think that gets back and to I, the planning, and I think that's what we. Need. One of the things that needs to be in this. Right. Not big and grandiose, right. but if you want to start a coffee shop or you want to start anything modest and achievable for them, then the town should have a process for them to go through and support systems for them to lean on. But the single most important thing the town could do for everything, I think, is to put in a sewer system. That would change all the possibilities. It would Incredible. open up life. Yeah. Uh, considerably, and it would save the environment also because mm -hmm. things are getting polluted and will continue to get worse. Well, so, if we had a sewer system, then downtown could be. Or clustered systems. Well, something. something that, a plan for. A plan for disposal of waste. Which we have the wastewater committee, mm -hmm. correct? I mean, I'm not really sure where, they're, where they stand right now and but what I they've think been doing. It's the most there seems to be a lot of. Yeah. Um, I know my brother was on it, and he's not on it any longer, so I, I don't really... There, from what I see from the outside looking in at the selectmen's me, select board meetings, um, there's the wastewater committee, and then there's the... Climate action. The water commissioners. Uh, the water commission yeah. and the water commissioners, and I think they're all sort of moving in the same direction, but I don't think they're moving together at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a coordination of efforts, so that might be something we would like to talk to members of those two boards to see where they're at and include that, what their goals would be, um, what zoning has to happen for those goals, because that's one of our charges, is to put zoning, what zoning changes would have to be mm -hmm. um, effected to make our goals Mm -hmm. Isn't the Water um, Commission going to um, hire a consultant momentarily? Mm -hmm. To the best of my understanding, yeah. but I don't really I keep think, up I with this yes. day yeah, to day. Yeah, make a difference when you have a professional consultant. I mean, it's so hard to rely on volunteers for everything. It's so much work mm -hmm. when it comes to water and wastewater. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's, it, it, it's a full-time thing, yeah. and you need a technical yeah. background, and you need to be devoted to it. You can't do it once a month Peace meetings. No. It's just, it's an, it's... So I think that's a step in the right direction. I agree. All right, having said all that, thank you, Jennifer. Um, uh, Bonnie has uh, let me know that she needs to leave at 9.15. Did you have something you'd like to say in your last three minutes? Yes. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, what you said about it's not realistic to have a population increase. Because I think we could set goals, you could set a target, you know, to have the population increase to 4,000, you know, in five years. You know, or to five thousand in ten years, and then you then you there's the chicken and egg thing where you need the jobs, you need the housing yeah. for that year-round population, mm -hmm. and so I mean I think there is a way to put that saying. into our I hear what you're and saying. it would help with the situation of the business people having trouble having enough business in the off season. And I do think that the Part-time resident homeowners, as they got to retirement age, many of them have this area as their retirement location. Uh, so there will be more full-time. Well, more. I'm an example. Yeah. There are those who you know who go away for the miserable months of the year, February, March, and April, or January, February, March, depending on your definition. And but they're still going to be full-time. Uh, you know, year-round residents for purposes of our statistics, so. Right, I, I definitely think that's an important point, though, to, to have in this plan, that we want to encourage 
the population growth of this town. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you don't think so? Well, I mean, I just know it, it hasn't changed. But do you disagree that we that should be a goal? Um, I, I don't disagree, but um, I just uh, I just don't know how we're going to do. I, I, I'm not buying so far how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, by law changes, and you know what I put in my part about seeking by law changes that encourage housing and commercial development well, without hurting the environment. Yeah, yeah, the housing. We always come back to the housing thing somehow. But commercial too. Um, it, the, com commercial businesses are are dependent on people to use them. You know, of course. So and numbers again. And and you, you keep coming back to housing because housing is is a major thing that keeps people from living here. There's a lot of year-round people on this part of the Cape who would love to live in Wellfleet. Right. That's yeah. true. I mean, even if our numbers haven't changed significant, significantly, the demographics have. Our mm -hmm. housing study showed the huge loss of population 24 to 45. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's where I feel our efforts to, be, I mean, and displace seniors who can't afford to live here when they need to downsize. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the, I think building up that 24 to 45 population is a real need for this town and also to and provide. School. Yeah. Thing for, for the school. Well, I think yeah. our selling point, the school is a selling point. If we can, if people in the 22 to 45 year old age brackets can live here and have, you know, employment, our schools are the equivalent of many fine private schools across the Commonwealth, and it's a selling point. I don't have to pay school tuition if I live here because the public schools are so good. And that's a huge selling point. Because I hear the chat in the line at the beach office in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things. They say, well, we'd love to move here because the schools are really good, but, you know, we can't. I work in New Jersey, that kind of thing. So um, it's, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. And I do know that there are people who grew up here in that age bracket who would really want to be here if they could mm -hmm. and make a living and have a place to live. So that's a good goal for this plan. Mm -hmm. Can I pass Elaine? mine around too? It's really so sketchy, but <laughs> wanted to get a start. <laughs> it's a beginning. Something. It's a beginning. <laughs> um, sketchy. I had the rural development areas and um, I had to put the definition. I had to put the definition from the policy plans up top to sort of keep it in my head. That's what's in the oops, thank you. That's what's in the italics up top. And you know, their real their real definition, a high percentage of open lands, which we definitely have, mm -hmm. sparse building development. We have our scattered multi, you know, um, single family homes and um, their definition uh, centers on agriculture, but I think agriculture and aquaculture here is both. They're both important. important. Um, so very general vision, and then just you know, this is just talking about it's what we're talking about. We have great assets. Wellfleet has amazing assets as a rural town, and that sets up our challenges at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, so a way to balance that, acknowledging that a lot of the challenges have created some of our assets, but then it has left us with um, the challenges. But, you know, reading about rural development and rural areas, we have all the assets that people say are part of a healthy rural community. You know, we have our main street, we have this compact development where people can come together. Um, we have our harbor, our aquaculture, we have the Cape Cod National Seashore Conservation Lands. The businesses we have are for the most part independent businesses. We have the cultural resources. 
But our challenge is, you know, which really was the real shocker from our housing plan was, you know, we've lost, what was it, 50 or more percent of the population in that age range over the past 20 years. Mm. So high cost of housing, lack of choice. The jobs we have, as detailed in this, are low-paying jobs. Our two top economies in town are low-paying jobs, but they are the predominant jobs that we have here. Um, does it say what, what they are? Well, it does, and there's one curious thing. It lists it in here. The top one is, um, it's in the Cape Cod Regional oh. Policy Plan. I had it in my other notes. Uh, you know, one was hospitality and tourism, retail. But then the third one said business and professional services. And I looked at all the other towns, and the only other town that listed that as one of their main things was Falmouth. And so I don't know what their definition of that is. Um, well, it'd be like landscapers and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they define that. And yeah, like well, professional. But services. but we have almost the highest percentage of you know retail and trade as, mm -hmm. as for, for our economy. So you know that's I mean that's sort of why housing affordable housing is important because the jobs that we have we have the jobs. They just don't yeah. pay enough to afford mm -hmm. uh, a market rate home. So if we had housing, the people that could sustain themselves doing those jobs, that would be important. Um, so some of the actions on the, uh, the other side um, were producing adequate supply of housing, Zoning changes to support all that. Um, I think seeking regional cooperation should be a huge part of our focus. Um, mm -hmm. When you think about um, the Walsh property in Truro, 70 acres. If we wanted to talk about a community center, could we talk about a shared community center? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about housing, I mean, East Ham's doing a big one, Truro's doing a big one, we're hopefully doing a big one. But if we don't get our big one done, our population is going to be moving <laughs> to, to the neighboring towns, and, and um, we're going to lose that younger demographic. Um, and if there was a way um, to, to blur, to erase some of our boundaries between towns for cooperation, I know it's, mm. it's a hard thing to do, but I think mm. it, at the Housing Institute, someone in the province town spoke up, and one of their goals is to talk, it said, with their neighbors about seasonal housing. Mm -hmm. And the woman from the state immediately said, I'll give province town of Truro $10,000 to study it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get wealth laid in on that, too. Um, so mm -hmm. I think some regional cooperation could help sustain our rural economy, but provide those things we're lacking. And, and then I think we really have to look at great ways to attract and keep young people the things that they want. I mean, high-speed internet, if people are you know, honing their way of working from home, it can be a very high level of work, or it can be... I, I have friends who make part of their living selling stuff on eBay, you know? Um, more housing choice. We have to support our local businesses, what we're talking about. We have to make it streamline it, uh, you know, support. The CDP is great for that. Um, and part of that would be a fully utilized Main Street. I mean, to have any empty building on Main Street is really a shame. Um, and um, so fostering the economic development that would support that, including the light industry, the trades park, transportation, just the whole kitchen sink thing. Yeah, you put it on uh, Good for you. Trying to. And I suppose a narrative could just be writing those things out in sentences, but I, I didn't feel prepared to do that. This is not particularly relevant to that, but could you have a high speed internet service here? We do, we have one here. But I mean, for the public? Yeah. Take a little of the pressure off the library is. Um, we have no space to put the high speed internet. Where are we going to put the people? Where are we going to put the computers in this building? Mm -hmm. And when things close well, down, a lot of it is kids are doing their homework at 10 o'clock at night, you know. And this uh, is closed. Or, True. Uh, it has to be available. It, you know, we're, we're not going to be that kind of vibrant community without it. We need more than the library. And it's not 
we don't have pressure. We're never, yeah. you know, the, the, the most full we ever were was when uh, there was a huge power outage in Wellfleet and we weren't down and people were... Checking packed, their email. People yeah. were packed to the gills. It was just funny. They were sitting on the floor. They were... But with <laughs> yeah. their Wi-Fi, People but were yeah. desperate for their. But um, that, yes. that's mm-hmm. for the most part we have. We're not, you know, but we're, when we're open, right? People could sit in their car in the parking lot and use the Wi-Fi. But I think what Elon was talking about is more broadband to people's homes and Wi-Fi right. to people's yeah. homes. Well, I think yeah. that, I think that's certainly in Eden don't have any. I can't imagine living here without any access. Well, some exactly. of them are people who I, don't I have know, it, which is um, dangerous in some instances. Exactly. It's irritating. It's dangerous. Yes, it is. Um, it is so. I think that will promote more, um, you know, younger the younger generation crowd moving here because a lot of people, you know, they work from home now. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so they can do a lot of business from home days. and having that yeah. available internet, right. you know, but, will, will, you know, could afford people to move here. Some of it's not their choice, though. It's Comcast um, negotiations and their unwillingness to extend the, um, it to certain areas because, mm-hmm. of the, you know, they, they can't have, it's a matter they can't afford to do it. Right. And, uh, well, so that's, you know, the, I mean, uh, the, the, puni- the community could decide yeah. to... To pitch in. To pitch in and make it happen, mm-hmm. you know, so spread we, across everybody. Don't we still have a cable uh, committee of some kind? Yeah, for some reason. Me as the chair of it. Yeah. So yeah, and, you know. But, you know, you're, you're against Comcast, which is a considerable-sized yeah. corporation, yeah. 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 our little committee. Yeah. Not, not to belittle you guys, but no, just to say it's, it's a power struggle. It's, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's a big ass, you know. Well, even Verizon, I mean, are they, is there any fiber optics, you know, anything? I don't know. They're, they're, trying, to, they're trying to do something. I, I yeah. see them working in Orleans, where I work. Yeah. Um, and I overlook, I'm right on Main Street, and there's been a lot of Verizon activity lately. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and, and to make money, they, kind of have, they really have to constantly expand and get new customers. Right. But... Uh, as of the moment, Comcast is still the only game in town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With okay. some competition, things could change. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is frustrating because we are all more and more dependent on not only internet access, but the speed of the internet access. Mm-hmm. Um, I was laughing the other day because we finally got rid of the fax machine on the front counter, our copy of the fax. And I was thinking, Remember how exciting it was when they first got oh, fax machines? Everybody's like, oh! We still have an answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fax machine. We have a fax machine and an answering machine. Yeah. So. Um, any uh, input on Elaine's? I think we're all, I'm pretty much um, grateful that Elaine volunteered to be on the committee because you will bring the housing piece to us, which I appreciate. Um, or one of your cohorts right yeah in subsequent meetings but but our sections in the thing are going to be these place types right well this I was rereading them did you, did you get the uh, document that was from the commission that yeah, I have outlined it there. so it's, it's okay. the place types and if you look at their policy plan they do it by place type but there's also separate sections and I think we should do the place types and then we should have a housing section and um, Bonnie's topic, economic vitality, and you know, just make it our own plan, not try to necessarily um, cookie cutter the po- regional policy plan. Mm-hmm. All right, anybody else bring in a section today that they'd like to discuss? The only one that wasn't assigned was maritime areas, so that's one that's going to need somebody to pick up eventually. Mac, would you like to do maritime areas? Certainly. Thank you. <laughs> I think we mentioned your name and decided not to assign it to you in absentia last time. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fine. I, I thought I got off easy. So. No, it, 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 it makes sense because you're familiar. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. All right, so next. The next steps are um, I want each of us to take what we have today, 
look it over. And we didn't really um, focus on a vision statement for each Well, we all started with J's. Mm. Right. Mm. Which is fine. So I'm, as long as we're all agree that those are good, I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. So you don't come and we still like what you do. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, let's see, what else do I want? One of the things I wrote down from our very first meeting is what will success look like? And I think that's a, uh, a question that we have to apply to each area that we write about, that we put into this plan. And it's what is success for Wellfleet? It's not generic success. It's if we um, decide that it would be Bonnie talked about increasing the population. Elaine brought the specificity of ages 22 to 45. Uh, if that's one of our goals, then I think that if we decided in five years or 10 years, we would like to have um, a 20% increase in the age group, that age group in town. Something specific, measurable, so that in five years we can look at it and not us, but necessarily, but whoever's doing this in five years can look at it and see if we've met our goal based on our benchmark. So um, that's one thing I would like to keep close because there's no point in a plan that's full of glowing descriptions and yeah. general goals without any specifics. Mm -hmm. At least I think so. That's my I agree. that's my way my, my plan works anyway. Well, I my think brain. It, all, it also helps to simply tell the next group if Mm -hmm. anything that we've tried to implement actually had any effect. Exactly. So I think exactly. it's really important that we yes. do put mm -hmm. some, you know, let's do some real specific measures. Well, yeah. Even when I attach dates to some of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it would be helpful, too, just to have, because they do say, you know, document your assets to document the assets, but then a list of assets and a list of challenges, just very clear, the bullet kind of thing, yeah. assets and challenges. And then the narrative can address how those challenges are to be met. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Trying to really clarify it so, so when people look at it, they just kind of get a clear vision of where we're going. Yeah, yep. One thing I started to do too, just with my my area for light industrial activity areas. I was looking at the old um, LCP plan that was developed with Brian Carlson and kind of going through all those line items uh -huh. to see what would fit right. within my particular category. Right. So it's not really, you know, we're not fully reinventing the wheel. Right, when so. we started, they were under the old regional policy plan, which right. is why Brian's lists are framed that way. Right. Yeah. But it took it, it was kind of a good exercise just to go through it and True. refresh what was already mm -hmm. thought about, mm -hmm. you know, in the past and see what mm -hmm. is, you know, obsolete now I or already do done or I have those, but I forgot to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. terms of process, um, last time I said I would check and find out so the process is exactly what we're doing. We come up with the draft. We submit it to the um, zoning board for their input on our recommended zoning changes. We come up with this would have to be changed, and then we give it to them, and they go, oh, that would work, and this one wouldn't. You have to do it this way kind of response. And then we have to hold a public hearing on the draft. So, so is, would that go to zoning or to planning? It would go to every committee. But the zoning bylaw committee is the one that okay, that the is okay, yeah. Sorry. yeah but yeah. that's the planning board, no? That's planning board. Yeah, that's the zoning. That that I mean, we have the uh, we have the zoning appeals board, but it's the but it's the planning board. board. I misspoke. You're right. Okay, so the planning yeah. board is the zoning bylaw. Yes. That's they're the people that deal with yes. zoning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah, be I, I'm misspeaking. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that is, and it will also go to any other committee that our recommendations are going to impact. 
which is probably every yeah. committee in Wellfleet, for lack of a better description. Mm -hmm. um, then we have to, we as a committee have to hold a public hearing. If the public hearing is people are basically pleased with it, no changes are recommended, that's fine. We go forward and submit it to the final draft to version to town meeting for approval. If there's a, a great um, disagreement or divergence on what we've put and what the public hearing generates, there may be a need for a second public hearing for after the changes have been made. So we can decide that after the public hearing. So I would like to think that we could maybe get uh, the draft together for a public hearing the end of January. Uh, then it could we would have time to uh, do the final editing and get it into the warrant because the warrant goes out to press what, the last of March, Courtney, uh, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. it, um, so I think that's a reasonable timeline. All right, so next time we'll do transportation, economic vitality, and Air time areas. And light industrial. And light industrial areas. To like, and we'll work on it. Make any notes on, on anybody's I stuff. On yeah. I have to get less Pollyanna. <laughs> 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 well, you want to revise, that's my word. Do you want to revise these based on the notes we got? Sure. <laughs> or amend them. Do you yeah. have any employees? Yeah, it's like, get a guess. Tough, Jim. I can't get tough. Uh, I, knew there, there I know it's hard of, for you, but you have to get it. I know it is. We have fun. All right, any other questions? We're come to 9.30. It's an hour. Um, which is my personal goal for a meeting, if I can. Um, we meet the 14th of November, I believe. That gives us three weeks. Why the 14th? Because the it's the meeting? second Thursday of November. We meet the second and the fourth. She's right. Correct. Because um, it's it's, the first Thursday is the seventh, yes. So we should work, be able to work yes. by then. Well, right. So we won't have a meeting the the fourth Thursday is that's Thanksgiving, so right. Right. we want to adjust our meetings for November at all. Mm -hmm. We should look into that. Because yeah. um, we could do we could do the first and third that month, which would be the seventh and the twenty-first. That's okay with me. If everybody else is okay with the uh, housing authority meeting the first Thursday of the month, so I wouldn't be able to come. Me. But, yeah, and me. Well, well, I, I guess too. So. Do you want to do, do a different day? Then? The second and the third instead of the second and the fourth, or is one week too little between meetings to get stuff accomplished? <laughs> no, actually, it pushes you a little bit. Because yeah, it gives you a tighter it. schedule. Yeah. yeah so. um, what do you think, Jay? I would prefer You're holding two your head. weeks. You're I, holding yeah, your yeah. head. <laughs> it gets been really. Short. All right. Shall yeah, we just take the twenty eighth off and call it a national holiday and meet again in December? Yeah. What we can really do on the on the fourteenth, we can like double up on our homework assignments so that when we meet, we've gotten more accomplished than we would between a, a two week. We might interval. use the same mission in December though, because the twenty sixth is the fourth Thursday, which is the day after Christmas, and I know I'm not going to be around, and I know Wells won't be around. Yeah, after. Be so we might be back to back one meeting a month. So we may want to consider switching. Maybe even switching days if we have to. There's so let's just let's let's think about it. Everybody go home and see if they if did the first and third Thursdays in December and see. Do you always have a housing meeting on the first Thursday? Okay. All right. So forget that. Um, let me look and see when the room is available, and on the 14th we can look at available dates and maybe come yeah. up with uh, a holiday month change in schedule. I'm gonna be on vacation. Forever. On, on, on the 14th. Um, okay. So we're going to bring the kids to Disney. Oh, <laughs> you're brave. <laughs> um, so well, if we're only having one meeting in November. It's not so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let me do this. Instead of waiting till the 14th, why don't I look at the schedule, my schedule. I know that the first Thursdays are bad for the two of you. And uh, see when the room is available. And because we do have other activities in here, and then send out, I'll send out one of those horrible doodle things. Five different dates or something. Right. And and people can. Good. People can. And we'll just take the majority. As long as we have quorum, we'll meet. Yep. You know, I think that's, I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. maybe we could push 
the 14th earlier in November without it being a Thursday. And that way we would still get stuff accomplished. Yep. Are you planning on being away? Um, the first, at, at, right after Thanksgiving. But oh, well, I think that we're close today after Thanksgiving. No. The, the week, the week after. after. All right, well. I'm moving this vacation that I was supposed to be on until then. Okay. It's okay. You know, everybody has a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had to get it in before plow season. So <laughs> yeah. I did see in the Farmer's <laughs> Almanac our first frost is due Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when we need a coffee shop. <laughs> it has hot cocoa too. Well, you know, I, I like it. Let's call, I like to accept a motion to adjourn because we're heavy in the weeds right now. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. We also, you know, we have.